We're going to be in Philippians chapter 4 tonight. And I'm going to present an idea and then we'll, we'll have a quick video to illustrate it. And then talk a little more about it. All right. Just so nobody's surprised about what happens tonight. That's the game plan. Okay? Okay. So uh, Philippians chapter 4, we'll read verse 8. Philippians 4, 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Lord Jesus, thank you for this word. Thank you for... Uh, this Bible that you've given us and that you feed us so faithfully. And uh just ask that you would lead us through this service again in your name. Amen. Okay, Philippians 4.8 is a great verse. We spoke about it last week, remember? Where we have the option to th- of things to think about. And we have the option. We We are every day confronted with things that could produce anxiety in us. And does produce anxiety in us, right? Don't be discouraged. Don't be condemned if you have anxiety. You are part of the human race if you have anxiety. It's just, well, how do we do? What do we do with it? Do we allow it? Remember we said a couple weeks ago, do I allow it to be an idol in my life where I give it all the attention it asks for? Or do I submit it to God by prayer and supplication? Uh, allow His peace to rule in my heart? And then now find some other substance to put in my mind. And that's what Paul is saying here. Think on these things. Think on these things. That stuff will be there. It will always be there. We will always be thinking about it. But add this to your mind. Think on these things. And I thought, thinking of this verse and listening to some messages this week from Pastor Schaller, and I, I thought that this idea that we are we are made to have a shepherd are we we are called sheep aren't we sheep ah we are sheep there's a sheep with a cough in the back all right everything all right need a pat on the back up there okay um but sheep are not the most dynamic creatures did you know if it rains too heavy a sheep could drown they don't have the idea that they could get themselves out of the way if they fall down in a hole upside down that could be the end of their life. Right? Have you ever fallen in a hole upside down and thought, this could be it, right? Oh, no. And someone comes and helps you. Hallelujah. Right? Uh, at one time I was in Spain. I was in Barcelona. And we went there on an art field trip when I was a freshman in high school uh, from Budapest, Hungary. And we went to one art museum and it was very strange, like very strange. So our art, our teacher, you know, we're in a Christian school. She said, okay, we're not going to go to any more art museums. We're just going to hang out in Barcelona. Like that was a little too much, I think, for us. Uh, so we ended up in an arcade one night, of course, all right? And uh, I was playing this, this video game. It's like a flight simulator. And it was pretty cool. When you rolled, the whole, the whole thing moved. Like it was this giant ball. And it moved with the plane, and you're doing barrel rolls and all this stuff. And uh, I was upside down flying, right? And all of a sudden, the whole thing shut down. But I was still upside down and like buckled in and like the whole thing. And I'm like, this isn't part of the game. My head, my, you know, the blood is rushing to your head and you just like, you can feel everything, right? Boo, boo. I needed help. I needed help. And thankfully, a, uh, another, you know, the equivalent of an arcade guy, right? A Spanish arcade guy came and bailed me out. But if we, we, sheep have this potential that the very little problem could be detrimental to them. And they actually depend on a shepherd. Not just for their direction, not just to get from one pasture to the next, but also for their health and for their survival. We are called sheep spiritually. Isn't that amazing? Uh, we are not called jaguars, right? We are not. Uh, we are not anything dynamic. We are sheep. And we are something that is designed to be dependent on a shepherd. Designed to be spoken to by a shepherd. Designed to be led by a shepherd. Uh, designed to be rescued by a shepherd when we're astray. 
And thankfully, we have a shepherd. An amazing John 10 is an amazing passage where Christ is explaining his role as our shepherd. Uh, and it's very clear and it's full of compassion. And I want, I have a video about, uh, sheep hearing a shepherd's voice. And it's, you know, it's not the highest quality, but it illustrates this point, I think, very well. Isn't that good? So the story is these, these kids are there. I don't know if it's a field trip or whatever it is. And then uh, they hear the call of the shepherd and they try to mimic it, right? And they get up there, yeah, get dig it, dig it, dig it, whatever, whatever it is, right? And the sheep, sheep doesn't even look at them, right? Doesn't even doesn't even register his noise. But then the shepherd steps up and he does his little da 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 da, and they you see like immediately the heads pop up, and then they start coming. There's another one I saw. I think it was in Ireland. And it was on this green hillside, and it's all fog, so thick, fog, thick fog you can't even see it. And the guy just steps up to this fog bank and does his call, and then you hear like rumbling, like rah, and it, and then they just come out of the fog to the voice. And it's a great illustration, uh, visually see how how sheep respond to their shepherd, and it's true of us also that we are designed this way that we are made this way, and when Christ calls us his sheep, it's no mistake. Uh, and it's not about how, you know, we don't have any way to defend ourselves, right? Have you ever seen a sheep try to defend itself? Not good, right? Not good. Uh, you know also if they don't get their, their wool cut, they could, it, like, and it rains, it's too heavy for them. <laughs> like it's all, it's not good, right? But that is not the picture that Christ is giving us. The picture that he's giving us is this, that we are designed to know whose we are. And turn to John 10. We are made, to, we are designed to know whose we are. And not only whose we are, but also, um, who he is and what he thinks about us and what he gives us. And you see here in John 10, Verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Who comes in through the door? Someone who has the authority to walk in through the door. Somebody who has the permission to walk in through the door. Someone who has the confidence to walk in through the door. The shepherd uses the door. But he that enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. I love that. He calls his own sheep by name, and he he leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers." Verse 7, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, right? That's the good, that's a good difference right there. Whose own the sheep are not. Who are, who are the sheep belonging to? The shepherd. The good shepherd. The hireling, they are not his sheep. Who knows that? The hireling knows that they are not his sheep, and the sheep know that they are not his sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of my sheep. Uh, this is our this is our Savior, all right, Christ. He knows us. He knows us intimately. He came and got us, didn't he? <laughs> we were lost sheep. And he came and he got us, however that was. And he put us on his shoulders and he carried us back to the flock. Um, sometimes that is like a, that there's a wrestle in that. Have you ever experienced that? The shepherd is saying, come on, Pedro, let's go. And you say, no. Right? 
And he says, okay, let's go. No. And there is an exchange there. But ultimately, he picks me up and he leads me back. And he takes me back to where I belong. And when I am there with the flock, when I am with the sheep, uh, then I am told something that I need to hear. I am given an identity, right? And I am given uh, a name that is different than than out there. Out there, how many names can we gather up out there in the world? We can gather a lot of names. Right? Rebellious, uh, headstrong, uh, strong-willed. Right? It's a nice way of saying stubborn. Um, whatever, right? Uh, uh, idolater, uh, infidel. Right? I could pick up names. What's another one I could pick up? Uh, fornicator, uh, failure. I could, I could pick up names. And it could be that I carry these names around and I hang them around my neck and I say, this is who I am. Right? This is who I am. And these names, I define myself by them. I see myself this way and then other people see me this way. And I think that God sees me this way. <clears throat> but actually, He sees me differently. He sees me as His own. And He comes to me and He speaks to me kindly. He speaks to me gently. And He gives me time to process what He's saying. Sometimes that can take a long time. But when I, when I hear it, I hear a different name. That I am a child of God. That I am in Christ. That I am perfect. That I am a new creation. Um, that I am a, a royal priest. That I'm part of a holy nation. Right? Totally different things. And I say to him, I say, but look at all these names. Right? Have you seen that girl, Simone Biles? Right? Like, she has the gold medals around her neck. She's only like four foot two. But she had like all these medals. I don't know, more than anybody ever, right? 25 gold medals, I think. Amazing. The most decorated uh, um, gymnast, right? But we, we, sometimes we feel like that with our identity in Adam. And we say, look at all my names, right? This is what I am. This is what you have to work with. God, are you sure you want this? And he says so kindly, he says, oh, no, I've taken all of those things. And he takes them from us. And he says, I have taken all of those. They have been placed on my cross. They are dealt with. They are done. And now you have a new name. That You are mine. You are my sheep. And we say, but sheep, you know, I don't know. That's not the most dynamic animal. And he says, hey, don't push it. No, no. He says, this is what you are, that you are made to depend on me. You are made to hear my voice and you are made to be uh, understanding who you are based on what I am saying to you. I saw another video. I spent some time looking at sheep videos today. Um, and it was it's called Lessons from Sheep. And it's a sheep farmer down south somewhere. He had a great great accent right down in South Carolina or something like that. And uh, he had behind him his sheep and there was the the flock over here. And then there was one he was calling T-Bone who was over here. And he said, look at old T-Bone over there, right? He's by himself. He said T-Bone is new to the flock. He had rescued him from another farm. And T-Bone comes into the pen and uh, he doesn't know the shepherd's voice. He said, I'm, I'm teaching him my voice and I'm teaching him what my voice means and I'm teaching him how to, how to understand me. Uh, he said, but what, what sheep do, sheep come together. They're made to be in a flock. He said, so what T-Bone does is he stays a little dis distance from the flock and everything they do, he does. And he said, every day he's getting a little closer to the flock and he's understanding what the flock does. And ultimately, he will understand who the shepherd is and what the shepherd does and what his voice means. And I thought this a great picture of us, and that's what he, this guy is saying, the point he's making. And it's a little devotional from the sheep pen. It's beautiful. And, uh, and uh, what a picture that we get saved, we are changed, and then we come into a new, a new uh, family, right? the family of God. We have a family here in this church, but I'm talking about the family of God, those born of Christ, born again believers, right? We come into a family and we don't know everything. And maybe I don't even know the clarity of the shepherd's voice. Maybe I don't know why he's always speaking. Maybe I don't, I'm not clued into everything, but I see that everybody is trusting in this one. Everyone is listening to the words of this one. 
And I follow along and then I begin to listen to this one. And this one makes a difference in my life. And I begin to follow him and I begin to hear him and I begin to know him and then he knows me. And now, and now T-Bone will eventually be in the flock, right? Like, like everyone else. Um, when Paul says, think on these things in Philippians chapter four, verse eight, think on these things. He's saying, these are the things that the shepherd has delivered to you. These are the words. These are the things like in this, in this Bible and in this life, God has delivered to us things to think about. And he knows us. He knows what sheep are like. He knows the anxieties that come into our life. And he knows the fears that we have. He knows the potential I have to drown in a rainstorm. Right? He knows the potential I have that the thing that is on me will be too heavy for me. And then he says, understand my voice. Hear my voice and come to me and think on these things. Think on the name that I have given you. Think on the identity I have given you. Think of the place I have placed you. Uh, think of the, the promises I have given unto you. Seven hundred or seven thousand something promises that I have given unto you. Think on these things. Is there enough there to think on? There is. There is. He has given us enough to think about. Our shepherd knows what we need and he has given them to us. He didn't save us to be lone wolves. But he saved us to be sheep that are dependent on the shepherd. And he loves being our shepherd. You ever think of that? I don't care what you do for work. There are days when you don't want to do what you do for work. Right? It doesn't matter. You could have the best job. You could love your job. But there are days when you're like, I really don't want to do this job. Right? Uh, Parenting can be that way. No. Honestly, it can be, right? And you could say that this is a lot for me right now. I wish these kids would do all their own stuff. But ultimately, we love doing what we do as our as parents. Um, Our shepherd loves being our shepherd, and he doesn't have days where he says, "Those sheep, right? They stink. They sound funny, right? They're slow. They eat slow. They get lost in a square room, right? I don't know what it is." But he doesn't have that attitude towards us. The attitude he has towards us is that he loves to speak to us. He loves to feed us. He loves to understand where we are. He loves to watch us as we are in the flock. He loves being our shepherd. And as he shepherds us, as he leads us, he teaches us. And he gives us uh, more of an ability to navigate this life. And that we, we are, we come in like T-bone over here where we're not sure what, what's going on. And we're not sure what this whole thing is about. But the more we know him, the more we know that he has purpose for us and he has something for us and that he teaches us his heart and he teaches us how to, how to live. He doesn't just give us a list of things to do. Isn't that great? Our shepherd doesn't just give us a checklist. And then says, okay, if you've done it all, then you're free to do whatever you want. But instead, he teaches us how to live. Titus 2, 11 and 12, that this grace teaches us how to deny ungodliness and how to live righteously. It teaches us. Now, that comes out at some point in our life. That the sheep glorify the shepherd at some point. And what the shepherd has poured into the sheep comes out and it tells people, that they are trusting in someone else. They are thinking on something different and they are following somebody. There was another YouTube video. I don't know if you guys saw it. It was about this uh, female police officer who walked into the wrong apartment building in Texas. Or was it Texas or Florida? In Texas? Yeah. She she walked into the wrong apartment building. Right? Wrong apartment. Right building, wrong apartment. She thought it was her apartment. It was uh, one floor above or below, either it doesn't matter. And there was, the door was ajar, and there was a guy sitting on her couch, she thought. So she shot him, and she killed him, right? Terrible, terrible, right? Terrible. And the court case went on. She was convicted. Uh, but at the end of the, uh, the court case, they had an impact statement by the young man's brother. I don't know if you've seen the video. If you haven't seen it, look it up. It's powerful. 
and the the young man comes down. He he's talking, and I don't know. They pick up the end of his statement, and he looks at her and he says, "Listen, I don't even want you to go to jail." He said, "I love you. I love you. I want the best for you. I don't want this." And he said, "My brother would want this also." And he said, "I think the best thing for you to do is to give your life to Jesus." He said, "That's all. That's he said. That's all I can say. I don't know. I think you should just give your life to Jesus." And then he looked at the judge and he said, can I give her a hug? And then it's quiet for a minute and he's like, you could hear he's broken. And he just says, please, please. And he's a young, young black man. right? And finally the judge says yes. And he comes down off the, off the dock there. And the, the woman just breaks out of the, and she locks onto him. And she, 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 the, the embrace is there. He's talking to her. I don't know, you know, I don't know what is said, but he, he loves, he says, I love you. And he just, it's such an embrace, right? You can see it. It's not just like a little side hug. Like they are locked up and, and they are hugging. Uh, and it was beautiful. And then the judge comes down and gives her a Bible and actually leads her to the Lord, I think. And it's a powerful story, right? It's an amazing story. Look it up. But, I'm thinking about this young man, right? This young sheep that is speaking on the behalf of his on behalf of his family who's lost his brother, but now something comes out of him that is not normal, right? Uh that is that just he would justly be very angry at her and he could have a lot to say to her and about her. But instead there's something different that comes out of him and it's forgiveness and it's love. And she knows it, and she receives it. Um, and what is that? That is a sheep who is taught by a shepherd. Because that is not normal. You don't see that in this world. You will only see that from someone who is knowing who their shepherd is, knowing who they are to their shepherd, and then knowing how their shepherd thinks about other people. Right? We live our lives based on what our shepherd tells us. Right? He leads us to the right pastures. Psalm chapter 23. Who is our shepherd? The Lord. Right? The Lord is who the shepherd? Anybody know? My shepherd, right? He is our shepherd, you're right, but he is my shepherd. Right? We can all say that. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord not just a God. Right? Man, you know, you see idols. Have you ever seen idols? Right? Sometimes they're 40, 50 inches. They hang on our walls. We look at them every day. Right? No, we've seen idols, right? You've seen the little carvings or the little things. You go to the nail salon. Not that I go there, but my wife does, and they have Buddha there. Right? I told you in New Hampshire once I saw the little Buddha at the nail salon, and then he had five or one bars lined up on his little altar. Right? Because Buddha, Buddha's got to stay regular. And... uh like there's our little idols, right? And can I look at my I can I look at that and say, is that my shepherd? Is that my shepherd? No, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 115 verse 3 says the Lord is in the heavens and he does whatever he pleases. And it has pleased him to come down here and be our shepherd and to love us. The Lord is my my shepherd. Uh, we could say, we could look out at the rest of Christianity and say, I'm glad they have shepherds, but what about me? I feel like I'm not worthy. I feel left out. Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, my very personal. He is my shepherd. He is our shepherd, but he is my shepherd. I shall not want. It's a very personal psalm. It's not a congregational psalm. It's very personal. I shall not want. Right? He leads me. He feeds me, right? He brings me to the places where I have good food, green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He makes me lie down. He is my shepherd. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because my shepherd is with me. And his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Right? You can see, you can watch the the sheep and Jerry was talking about the sheep in Afghanistan that he saw, and they they have these sticks, right? And they could be walked behind a shepherd. You give him a little tap on the hip, and that that changes things, right? There is an adjustment there based on a touch from the shepherd's staff. 
It is a comforting thing to know that if I step out of line, there is direction there. Though I walk with his rod and his staff, they comfort me. And he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That when I, when I am there and I am faced with conflict, it is not the conflict that is the biggest thing. It is my shepherd that is the biggest thing. And my shepherd is there and he's prepared something for me and I am fed in difficult times. And I am actually, like Jeremiah 17, I don't feel the heat when it comes because I have my shepherd who feeds me. And uh, <clears throat> this is where I will be for the rest of my life. right? Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. How many days? All right? 300 out of 365? No. All the days of my life. There is not a day where He is not present. There is not a day where He is not caring. There is not a day when He is not speaking to me. There is not a day when the Bible is not open to me. Because He is my shepherd. And I am made to be shepherded. And my shepherd has given me lots of things to eat. And lots of things to think about. And He loves to be my shepherd. So... Uh, let's be let's be <clears throat> led by the shepherd this week, and in this and in this time, let's be shepherded and allow him to lead us to things that we can think about. Uh, we revolve things around in our mind. I, I have been practicing this, and you know when you have like five minutes, like to go from one thing to the next. I don't need to leave for five minutes. That's like maybe a, a, a useless time. But actually, it's not. It's a very powerful amount of time. And it could be that I watch a five-minute YouTube video. All right? I could look on Instagram for five minutes. I could stare at the wall for five minutes. Or I could say, in five minutes, I'm going to pray. Right? Until it's time to go, I'm going to pray for five minutes. I'm going to meditate on a verse for five minutes. Um, when, the, when I make my coffee in the morning, you see, I put the coffee machine on and I go do something else. But now I put the coffee on and I stand at a window and I pray until the beep goes. And then that, then I can turn my brain on. Right? But we can, we sit there and we pray. And I think it's a good practice because in this practice we find what our shepherd is saying. We find food and we, we feed ourselves and we establish some kind of pattern for the day that I will be hearing the shepherd's voice and I will be depending on it. Take a verse with you. Take a verse with you. Walk around for two minutes and try to memorize a verse. Try to remember one line, right? The Lord is my shepherd. Repeat that. Drive that into your brain for the day. The Lord is my shepherd. And then when you are faced with difficulty, you will remember I have a shepherd and he prepares a table for me in the midst of my enemies. So bon appetit, right? Let's eat in difficulty. And, uh, and, and know, and know that he loves to be our shepherd. He loves it. And you know what? The shepherd, I can imagine that when that shepherd calls the sheep, he gets a little thrill out of all the heads popping up. And then the, the calls start coming. And then the, the rumble comes. And they come to him. Right? Imagine what God, how God feels when he calls us and we look to him and we say, Oh, I know that voice. Yeah. That means the oat bag is coming. Yeah. Come on. And I run to him. And he says, Yes, they get it. They get it. Like there is such a great joy when when somebody runs to you, right? Your kid runs to you, jumps in your arms in some achievement. I mean, even yeah, we feel this even with our pets. We love it, don't we? I saw this video the other. Look at me, I'm exposing my YouTube time, right? This person that showed a bunch of like animals are awesome was the thing, and these animals, even like chickens and turkeys and ducks, jumping into people's arms and like putting their head on their shoulder. And you look at the response from the people and they melt, right? They're like, oh, my duck. Right? Like that feeling, it's, it's true, right? It is. It's awesome. We love it when someone runs to us and they're depending on us and they're so loved by us that they would, they would crash into us. We love it. God is the same way. He loves it when we run to Him. And He doesn't look at us like we are and we have all these things clanging around on our necks of an old identity. He says, no, 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 here come, here he comes, yeah, come on. And so we trip on the way, we fall flat on our face. And he says, oh, it's okay, get up. And we get up and we run to him. He anticipates it, he loves it. And when we get there, he has a lot to say to us. He has a beautiful song to sing to us. And he has a lot that, that we he wants us to know as much as we will be there listening to him. So, okay, that's it. He is our shepherd. 
He loves being our shepherd. And as our shepherd, he has a lot to give to us. So let's think on these things. Amen? Lord, thank you for uh, the reality that you are our shepherd. And that um, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because you are with us. And your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Lord, thank you. Thank you. We thank you that you love to hear our voice. You love to hear our prayers. You incline your ear unto us. So we ask that you would work in this church and in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.